So, so essentially, social workers are like firefighters, CPS. It's just like that. We get dispatched into crisis situations. When homes are on fire, when bad things are happening, we have to go out and assess the situation. But we're also like firefighters on the other end. Our job is to install smoke detectors. We tie in the community, the teachers, the doctors, and law enforcement, and family members to figure out how they can operate as a family to keep kids safe. Can they do it without us? That's the idea. How do we serve you in a way so that we don't see you again and neither does the prison industrial complex? You get what I'm saying? We are first responders. We get called out when children are maybe abused or neglected and we have to walk into those hot situations, assess it quickly, and then figure out how to help the family sustain. I'm advocating for the people, the public that I serve as an unemployment specialist, helping those people who have been caused, have been forced to wait hours, sometimes days, sometimes weeks in order to talk to a real person with our agency to get assistance because of staffing cutbacks in the specific office that I work, in the specific department within that office. Our staffing level has been cut drastically. You as a business uh, professional or, or owner or you as a, a citizen, uh, would you like your insurance not to pay your money when you really need to? We, we are very important to make sure that the insurance companies are there. They are solvent and they are doing what they're supposed to do. So I work with employers to try to help them put in safety programs to put together elements for, to protect their employees from injury and then how to how to counsel them on how to handle a claim or something when an employee does get injured. Help us keep the funding that we need that so we can have the, uh, the, the resources to take care of these children. Uh, what I do is I, uh, is I authorize daycare for them, which oftentimes, and this is my my passion is that these children that I'm working with is oftentimes this is the only structure that they have. At the Department of Licensing, we keep the Washington roads safe by keeping unsafe drivers off the roads as well as provide licensing and business services to the public. And these types of things help keep our community vital help keep our community strong and growing, and we are asking for your support in helping us to maintain the level of service for a growing community to keep Washington strong. This is our country, it's our government, it's our job to make things better. If we don't let our voices be heard, if we don't take whatever means that we can take to make things better in our lives to help our community, then we've really given up and we aren't, we aren't playing a part of the game. You can't complain about the game if you're not willing to contribute. If we are, as interpreters are able to make a living, then we're going to stay. We're not going to leave. So we are going to have better qualified interpreters um, available to provide those services. So we elevate the quality of our services and we also, the interpreters, Right now, part of the union, we require continuous education. In the other agencies, the uh, LNI, they don't require that. So we also want to elevate the quality of interpreters. Um, I do interact with families quite a bit. Um, we recently started doing things called reentry team meetings where we bring families to the table with the youth to help develop a plan of goals they want to achieve while they're at our facility and how we can help them transition back into their home because ultimately families are the experts in themselves. And so for us to come in and tell them what to do would not be the right thing. For them to come tell us what they need from us will definitely help them more in their community and when they transition back into their community and their families.